Hello everyone. Today we're focusing on a series of critical developments in the Middle East and beyond that are shaping the global landscape. Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu has hinted that Tehran's nuclear program could be the next target amid escalating tensions, particularly as Iran threatens to pursue nuclear weapons in light of what it describes as an existential threat. In response to these intensifying regional dynamics, the U.S. has deployed additional military forces to the Middle East, as confirmed by the Pentagon. On the ground in Israel, several individuals have been detained following a significant leak of information from the Prime Minister's office. In ongoing hostilities, Israel has claimed responsibility for killing one of Hamas's last high-ranking members, while 19 people were reported injured in central Israel following a projectile launch. Meanwhile, Israeli airstrikes have resulted in the deaths of 52 individuals in eastern Lebanon and extensive damage in southern Beirut, raising alarms as UN agencies report that the entire population of Gaza is at risk of death. The UNRWA chief has stated that Israeli forces damaged the agency's office in the West Bank, a claim disputed by Israel. In the U.S. political arena, former President Trump has criticized Vice President Harris over what he describes as the worst jobs report in the history of our country while House Oversight Chairman Comer is investigating the FBI over revised crime statistics. Shifting focus to Asia, North Korea has vowed to support Russia until it prevails in Ukraine, prompting Ukrainian President Zelensky to warn that this alliance poses significant risks for the region, particularly given China's notable silence on the issue. In support of Ukraine, the U.S. is sending an additional $425 million in military assistance, as North Korea reaffirms its commitment to self-defense efforts. Stay tuned as we delve deeper into these pressing stories. Netanyahu signals Tehran's nuclear program could be next target as Iran plans future attack. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has hinted that Iran's nuclear program could be Israel's next focus. Speaking at a graduation ceremony for Israel Defense Forces IDF soldiers, Netanyahu underscored his commitment to preventing Iran from obtaining nuclear weapons. This remark responds to a recent statement from Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei, who warned that Israel underestimates Iran's power. Israel's possible strategy targets nuclear sites, while the U.S. cautions against it to avoid escalating into a regional conflict. However, Israeli intelligence suggests Iran may plan a retaliatory attack indirectly likely through allied militias in Iraq or Syria. Iran's control over short-range ballistic missiles in Iraq positions these proxies within range of northern Israel. Analysts suggest Iraq's strategic location lets Iran open additional fronts against Israel, while sidestepping attacks on its own territory. Given the U.S. presence in Iraq, an Israeli strike there could further internationalize the conflict, but Israel remains focused on its primary objective, neutralizing perceived nuclear threats from Iran. U.S. deploys additional military forces to Middle East amid intensifying regional tensions, Pentagon. The U.S. is bolstering its military presence in the Middle East amid escalating regional tensions. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin has ordered additional B-52 Stratofortress bombers, tanker aircraft, and Navy destroyers to be deployed, marking a strategic move to support Israel and deter potential aggression from Iran. This buildup follows Israel's recent strikes on Iran's last remaining S-300 air defense systems, as well as Netanyahu's declaration that preventing Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons is Israel's top priority. The Biden administration has reinforced its commitment to defending Israel and safeguarding U.S. interests as hostilities with Hamas and Hezbollah continue. This shift coincides with the USS Abraham Lincoln's return to San Diego, which will remove about 5,000 sailors from the Middle East. With no immediate replacement carrier, Additional Navy destroyers equipped with ballistic missile defenses will temporarily fill the gap. Although the precise location of the new deployments remains undisclosed, this increased presence signals a robust stance to counter regional threats. Several detained in Israel after information leak from PM's office. Several individuals in Israel have been detained over a suspected information leak from Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office. The leak is under investigation by Israel's Shin Bet Security Service, the army, and police, with reports indicating it could threaten military operations in Gaza. While an investigating judge lifted part of the news embargo on this case, Netanyahu's office denied that any of its own staff were involved and pushed to lift the embargo entirely. The office claims that the restriction only fuels malicious rumors against the prime minister. This case underscores the heightened sensitivity around Israel's military actions and security protocols amid ongoing conflicts. 
Iran warns it could seek nuclear weapons in face of existential threat. Iran has warned it may seek nuclear weapons if it faces an existential threat. Kamal Karazi, a top advisor to Iran's supreme leader, stated that while Iran has the capability to produce nuclear arms, it has refrained from doing so due to a religious ban issued by Ayatollah Khamenei. However, this doctrine could shift if Iran perceives a critical threat to its survival. In light of recent Israeli airstrikes that destroyed Iran's S-300 air defense systems, Karazi said Iran is prepared for war but aims to deter further escalation. These airstrikes, which included stealth F-35 jets and missiles launched from neighboring Iraq, targeted sites linked to Iran's missile and defense infrastructure but avoided direct hits on nuclear facilities. The damage to Iran's air defenses now leaves its airspace more vulnerable to future Israeli strikes. U.S. intelligence indicates Iran could launch an attack on Israel within days, possibly via drones from its proxies in Iraq. Karazi emphasized that Iran will retaliate if Israel continues its strikes, and also hinted at extending missile range if Europe does not respect Iran's territorial integrity. Iran is also increasing cooperation with Russia and China to counter Western influence, adding to the region's already tense landscape. Israel claims it killed one of Hamas's last high-ranking members. The Israeli military announced that it has killed Iz al-Din Kassab, a senior Hamas figure they describe as one of the last high-ranking officials within the group's political bureau. Kassab, targeted in Khan Yunis, was reportedly responsible for coordinating between Hamas and other militant factions in Gaza and had authority to organize attacks against Israel. Hamas confirmed Kassab's death, noting he was killed alongside another official in an airstrike on their vehicle. However, Hamas downplayed his rank suggesting he was a local figure rather than a top decision-maker. Meanwhile, Israel's airstrikes in Gaza continue, with local medical sources reporting 64 fatalities overnight. The humanitarian crisis has become dire, with the UN describing conditions in northern Gaza as apocalyptic, warning of severe risks to the population from disease, hunger, and violence. The US attempted to mediate a ceasefire, sending envoys Amos Hochstein and Brett McGurk to Israel. However, after little success in halting the violence in Gaza and Lebanon, they returned to the U.S. 19 reported injured in central Israel after projectile launch. 19 people were injured in central Israel's Sharon region early Saturday after three projectiles were launched from Lebanon, according to Israeli police. The attack triggered sirens across central Israel, and although the Israeli military intercepted some of the projectiles, one appeared to hit the area. The injuries, reported in the town of Tira, ranged from mild to moderate, with two individuals also experiencing stress symptoms. The Islamic resistance in Iraq later claimed responsibility for launching drones at a vital target in northern Israel, though it's unclear if this specific action caused the injuries in Tira. This incident follows a significant rise in hostilities between Israel and Hezbollah in Lebanon, adding to the escalating regional tensions. Israeli airstrikes kill 52 in East Lebanon pound southern Beirut. In a series of intense Israeli airstrikes on Friday, 52 people were killed and 72 injured in eastern Lebanon, as confirmed by the Lebanese Ministry of Health. The strikes, concentrated in the Baalbek Hermel province, were especially deadly in the town of Amhaz, where 12 lives were lost. Simultaneously, Israel conducted airstrikes in southern Beirut, an area known as a stronghold for Hezbollah. These attacks were described as apocalyptic by residents, with over 20 strikes hitting Beirut's Dahia district, causing plumes of black smoke and explosions heard across the city. Israeli forces targeted Hezbollah command centers and weapons facilities, accusing the group of hiding arms in civilian areas. Adding to the escalation, an Israeli drone struck an apartment in Kermitiya, southeast of Beirut, killing at least two people, including a Hezbollah member. Israel has also carried out hundreds of airstrikes in Lebanon and Gaza over the last 24 hours, targeting command centers and rocket launchers linked to both Hezbollah and Hamas. The violence has forced many residents to flee as black smoke and rubble cover impacted areas. Amidst these tensions, Iranian official Kamal Karazi, advisor to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, declared that Iran will respond to Israel's actions, warning that the attacks will not go unanswered. This follows a recent Iranian missile attack on Israel and raises concerns of a broader regional conflict involving Iran-backed Hezbollah and Hamas, both of which continue to attack Israeli targets. UN agencies say entire population of Gaza at risk of death. In a grave warning issued on Friday, leaders from 15 United Nations agencies and aid organizations demanded an immediate ceasefire in Gaza. 
They stress that the entire population of northern Gaza, where Israel has intensified its ground operations against Hamas, faces an imminent threat of death from disease, starvation, and ongoing violence. The joint statement, released by the UN Interagency Standing Committee, cautioned that the entire Palestinian population in North Gaza is at imminent risk of dying. The statement's signatories include the heads of major organizations like the UN's Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, the UN Children's Fund, UNICEF, the World Health Organization, and the World Food Program, as well as Oxfam. They emphasize the dire urgency for a lasting ceasefire, declaring that the entire region is on the brink of the abyss. This call for action underscores the immense humanitarian toll on Gaza's civilian population urging global leaders to intervene to prevent further suffering and loss of life. UNRWA chief says Israeli forces damaged agency's West Bank office, Israel disputes claim. The ongoing tensions between Israel and the United Nations Relief and Works Agency UNRWA escalated this week, as UNRWA's chief, Philippe Lazzarini, reported significant damage to the agency's office in the Nur Shams camp in the West Bank. He stated that Israeli bulldozers caused the damage, rendering the office unusable. However, the Israeli military has disputed this claim, asserting that the damage was the result of explosives planted by terrorists near the UNRWA offices, which detonated during an attempt to harm Israeli Defense Forces IDF soldiers. The IDF statement categorically denied responsibility for any destruction to the UNRWA facility. Adding to the tension, Israel recently passed a law prohibiting UNRWA from operating within its borders, citing allegations of involvement by some UNRWA staff in the October 7th attacks on southern Israel. Following an internal investigation, the UN had previously dismissed nine staff members believed to be involved in those attacks, though UNRWA maintains that the vast majority of its employees uphold principles of neutrality. Lazzarini condemned the law as a dangerous precedent that contravenes the UN Charter and Israel's international obligations, while Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu emphasized the need for accountability for UNRWA workers allegedly involved in terrorist activities. Trump hits Harris over worst jobs report in the history of our country. At a rally in Warren, Michigan, former President Trump criticized the latest jobs report from the Labor Department, labeling it the worst jobs report in the history of our country. He asserted that the report, which revealed only 12,000 new jobs created in October, while the unemployment rate remained at 4.1%, reflects poorly on Vice President Kamala Harris and President Biden, claiming they have driven the economy off a cliff. Trump's remarks came just days ahead of the elections, framing the dismal job numbers as a sign that voters should reject the current administration. He expressed concern for families, stating, If she gets four more years, your family is never going to recover from these stupid people. While Trump's criticism was pointed, it's worth noting that the Bureau of Labor Statistics attributed some of the disappointing job numbers to recent hurricanes and strikes, which affected payroll growth. Jared Bernstein, the chair of the Council of Economic Advisors, mentioned that despite the challenges, the underlying job growth remains healthy at about 150,000, enough to keep the unemployment rate steady. In contrast to the jobs report, recent data from the Commerce Department showed a GDP increase of 2.8% from July to September, suggesting some positive economic indicators. However, Trump dismissed the report as pitiful, highlighting that such a negative jobs report just before the election poses a significant challenge for Democrats. With the economy viewed as a key issue for voters, this jobs report may influence the upcoming elections. House Oversight Chairman Comer investigating FBI over quietly revised crime statistics. The House Oversight Committee led by Chairman James Comer has launched an investigation into the FBI regarding what they describe as a failure to report complete and accurate national crime data. In a letter addressed to FBI Director Christopher Wray, Comer pointed out that the FBI quietly revised its 2022 statistics, initially reporting a 1.7% decrease in violent crime. However, it later acknowledged a 4.5% increase that included an additional 1,699 murders, 7,780 rapes, 33,459 robberies, and 37,091 aggravated assaults. Comer expressed concerns that the FBI's failure to provide accurate crime statistics undermines the credibility of the 2023 Crime in the Nation report, which Vice President Kamala Harris has publicly cited. The committee suspects that the discrepancies in reporting may be politically motivated and is seeking documents and communications from the FBI to clarify the situation. The FBI, in response, defended its reporting methods, 
stating that a significant number of agencies had not transitioned from the traditional summary reporting system to the national incident-based reporting system, which impacted their data collection for 2021. The Bureau emphasized its commitment to transparency and announced plans to move to monthly data releases to ensure more timely updates and corrections as needed. North Korea vows to stand alongside Russia until it defeats Ukraine. North Korea has pledged its unwavering support for Russia in its ongoing conflict with Ukraine. During talks in Moscow, North Korean Foreign Minister Choi Son-hui declared that Pyongyang would stand alongside Russia until it achieves victory in what she termed a holy war. Choi highlighted a new level of relations, characterized by a strong military partnership, stating that North Korean leader Kim Jong-un has instructed officials to provide powerful assistance to Russia. She expressed confidence in Russian President Vladimir Putin's leadership, asserting that the Russian military will achieve a significant victory in its efforts against Ukraine. Analysts suggest that North Korea may be exchanging weapons for technological support from Russia, potentially benefiting Kim's nuclear program. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov praised the very close military ties between the two nations, emphasizing their importance for the security of both countries. However, neither minister openly discussed the imminent deployment of North Korean soldiers to the front lines. Since Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, North Korea has emerged as a key ally, supplying artillery shells and missiles. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken indicated that as many as 8,000 North Korean troops may already be stationed in Russia and could be deployed within days following the approval of a mutual military assistance pact between Putin and Kim. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky warned that the entry of up to 13,000 North Korean soldiers into the conflict is imminent and urged Western nations to respond strongly. He noted that Putin is assessing the reactions of NATO and other countries to the troop deployment. While U.S. officials are reportedly seeking China's assistance to curb Kim's actions, Western analysts caution that the quality of North Korean troops being sent to fight will likely be poor. Many of these conscripts lack combat experience and Russian language skills, raising concerns about their effectiveness in the battlefield, as they may be used by Russia as cannon fodder in mass infantry tactics. Zelensky warns North Korea, Russia alliance could spell trouble for Asia. China's silence is striking. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has raised alarms about the potential dangers of the growing alliance between North Korea and Russia, warning that it could destabilize not just Ukraine, but also neighboring nations in Asia allied with the West. In an interview with South Korea's KBS, Zelensky emphasized that North Korea's actions are deliberate and strategically aimed at gaining support from Russia. He pointed out that approximately 10,000 North Korean troops have been deployed to Russia for training, with around 80% already stationed in Kursk, expected to engage in combat operations against Ukraine in the coming days. Zelensky described this development as a war of two countries against one, urging South Korea to play a more significant role in countering Russia's prolonged aggression. Zelensky expressed concern about the implications of North Korean involvement, stating that this alliance should be recognized globally as a serious threat. He highlighted the geographic proximity of North Korea to South Korea and urged his allies to prepare against the possibility of similar threats in the future. He suggested that allies in the region should consider forming an Asian security alliance to bolster defenses against aggressors like North Korea. He also criticized China's silence on the matter, noting that as a regional power, its lack of response is notable. Zelensky warned that Russian President Vladimir Putin is testing the resolve of the West and its allies by observing their reactions to North Korean forces joining the conflict. In light of these developments, the U.S. announced a new $425 million defensive aid package for Ukraine, which includes air defense interceptors and other military equipment. However, it did not include the advanced Tomahawk missiles that Zelensky had requested, which has reportedly frustrated him. Zelensky's comments reflect a growing concern that the alliance between Russia and North Korea could have far-reaching consequences, not only for Ukraine, but for the stability of Asia and beyond. U.S. is sending $425 million in military assistance to Ukraine. The Pentagon has announced a new military assistance package for Ukraine, totaling $425 million, as the country braces for an intensified conflict with Russian forces, bolstered by over 10,000 North Korean troops. 
Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin had previously indicated that more aid was forthcoming during his recent visit to Kiev. This latest package includes critical military supplies drawn from U.S. stockpiles, such as air defense interceptors for national advanced surface-to-air missile systems, munitions for high-mobility artillery rocket systems, 155mm artillery, armored vehicles, and anti-tank weapons. As the situation escalates, Ukraine's eastern cities are under severe threat from Russian missile strikes, exemplified by a recent attack in Kharkiv involving a 500-kilogram glide bomb that tragically resulted in three deaths and numerous injuries. The city, located just 30 kilometers from the border, has been a focal point of Russia's increased bombardment strategy, which utilizes powerful glide bombs to hit targets well beyond the front lines. With the arrival of North Korean soldiers at Ukraine's border, there is growing concern about their imminent involvement in the fighting. The newly announced aid package brings the total U.S. military assistance to Ukraine since Russia's invasion in February 2022 to a staggering $60.4 billion, reflecting the ongoing commitment of the U.S. to support Ukraine in its defense efforts. North Korea vows to continue what it calls self-defense efforts, KCNA says. North Korea has announced its intention to continue strengthening its self-defense capabilities as tensions escalate on the Korean peninsula. According to a spokesperson from the North Korean Foreign Ministry, the country feels compelled to intensify its efforts to counter perceived military threats from the United States and South Korea, accusing them of escalating war scenarios. The spokesperson highlighted that North Korea has faced over 20 military exercises this year from Washington and Seoul, leaving Pyongyang with no option but to take significant measures to prevent a potential nuclear conflict. In a separate statement, Kim Yo-jong, the influential sister of leader Kim Jong-un, criticized recent comments from the UN Secretary General regarding North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missile tests, insisting that such actions are necessary for the country's self-defense. This week, North Korea showcased its military capabilities by testing the Hwasong-19, a new solid-fuel intercontinental ballistic missile. This launch occurred shortly after North Korea began sending soldiers to support Russia in its ongoing war in Ukraine, prompting swift backlash from the US, South Korea, Japan, Europe, and the United Nations. The recent missile launch reportedly achieved a higher altitude than any previous North Korean missile, as tracked by military forces in South Korea and Japan. The missile landed in the ocean between Japan and Russia, further heightening regional tensions. In response to these developments, South Korea and the U.S. conducted their first-ever joint live-fire drills, utilizing advanced drones like the Global Hawk and Reaper to simulate attacks on enemy targets, marking a significant step in military collaboration between the two nations.